So, <clears throat> hello everybody. Uh, if you uh, want to um, follow along with the uh, slides and the code snippets, there are going to be a lot of code snippets in this talk. Uh, you can find those uh, there. I try to make my slides uh, accessible so you can follow along. So yeah, today we're going to talk about code generation. Uh, we're going to see uh, why is it useful and uh, how easy it's, um, it is to add code generation to a project. So I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm sure you're going to relate. Um, let's say that you, um, you start a new project. You're going to have your designer and link you some fonts. But those fonts have some uh, strange names because uh, you don't actually know where they came from. And uh, you start to try to implement those fonts, to use those fonts in your project. And you are starting to wonder what the name of the font uh, you, want, you have to put there. You have to do some, um, some detective work there uh, to open font book and to look at the real post, postscript name of the font. And it's really uh, annoying to have to do that every time. And the same can, happen, can uh, happen when you use localized strings, right? Because maybe you have um, hundreds of localized strings in your code, and you don't remember the exact um, spelling of the key you used. And even if you do, some strings, uh, you're going to use them for formatting. And then you're going to uh, forget uh, which, is, uh, which is the order of the parameter that are expected. And if you get it wrong, uh, you're going to crash at runtime. So uh, I feel it's really not a great, um, great situation. Um, yeah, that sucks, right? Um, we want to make that better. So what we actually want is to use constants, right? Magic strings are bad, constants are good. Um, the, the good part of, about constants is you can't get them wrong, but you also have auto-completion. Well, when Xcode is in the mood. <laughs> uh, yeah, you hope you have auto-completion, uh, which allows uh, to have also discovery, because you don't actually know which custom fonts you have. And uh, you can even have a completion both for the constant, and we hope to achieve uh, even one step uh, ahead and get the, the actual type of the placeholders of the um, format strings that you're going to use. So that's what we want, right? And if you have that, you can sit and relax and use those constants. You're going to be good, right? Um, Sure, but there's still a lot of, um, of effort to do there, and you're going to have gaps in your constants because you're going to add new fonts, and you're going to forget to update those fonts, and you're going to fall into those traps. So that's uh, when I decided to, um, to create CodeGen, well, SwiftGen, which is a code generation tool. Uh, it's actually just a command line tool, so you download, you install it, and you run it in the terminal or in your build phase. And it looks just like this. So uh, you put these kind of commands in your build phase, and every time you build and run your project, uh, it's going to generate all those constants for you. So you don't have to uh, type them, you don't have uh, the risk of mistyping or misguessing uh, the font names. Uh, it's going to do all, all of this for you. And uh, even if you add fonts, it's going to update them because you use the build phase. So every time you build, you get the updated re version. And even more complicated stuff like uh, parsing strings with parameters, uh, with placeholders, uh, can generate, generate quite um, powerful uh, structures. That allows you to uh, get everything right. And now that we have that, uh, you just imagine, right, you just download a tool, put just a single build phase, and you can just relax and enjoy. Now we are really talking about enjoying uh, all, the, all the work that has been done for us. Uh, just one thing that I didn't like about CodeGen at that point, I've seen uh, other tools doing that. But uh, there is always going to be 
um, a fight at some point uh, about how the generated code has to look like. Maybe uh, you're going to want space or tabs, or maybe you're going to want an enemy with cases and lazy load the image versus having the, the images uh, loaded uh, directly. Maybe you're going to need some uh, specific stuff uh, in, your, in your constants, and you want to be able to customize that. Uh, so that's uh, why we decided to, um, to build SwiftGen on top of templates. So the idea of templates is really simple. You just describe uh, the exact code that you want, but inside the code, you put some markup to tell, um, to tell what you want to generate. So that just looks like uh, Swift code with some tags in it, uh, same way like you would do uh, PHP and HTML uh, mixed together, for example. So what SwiftGen does uh, is it uh, scans, for example, here your image, uh, your assets catalogs, and it generates an internal representation uh, of your images and feed uh, this representation, which is basically just a dictionary, and it feeds that to the template, and the template is going to iterate over all the images, and for each image, generate a static let. So if we take a quick look there, uh, we have a basic for loop to iterate over all the images, and for each image, uh, we're going to generate a constant. That constant is going to use UI image named and the name of the image, so that's the double curly braces that you got there. And um, you can even use filters, so that's the pipe character there, because the name of the constant is going to probably be uh, the actual name of the image, but maybe uh, this image name uh, may contain some dashes or start with uh, digit and wouldn't uh, make your code compile. So we want to filter the name of the image to make sure that it's a valid identifier, and if it's not, re replace every invalid character with uh, underscores, for example. So it's really simple to come up with templates, but it can also really be powerful and allow you to customize everything. And if you don't like uh, those static lets, you can just use the exact uh, same principle, but uh, generate enemies cases instead. And use even uh, different filters, like, for example, here we want uh, our cases to start with a lower case because we want to respect Swift 3 uh, uh, naming conventions. And you can really do um, customize everything you, you need. And now uh, we just add a build phase, add a custom template, and we can just enjoy and profit. We just got auto completion, which allows us to have auto discovery of what fonts we got, what string we have, and also um, avoid typos, uh, have type safety, even. Um, even for, for the constants, but even for the types in our format strings, so we won't crash with a bad access as before. Um, and it's highly customizable. And because it's customizable, actually, sure, the tool is called SwiftGen, but you can actually generate whatever you, you want. You can, uh, I've seen people uh, use SwiftGen to generate documentation and even object QC. Yeah, <laughs> that's still a thing. Um, so you can, uh, you can have everything you, you wish there, and you don't have to maintain that uh, once you put that in your project. So that's just a few steps, like downloading, the, downloading a tool, putting it, that in your project, and then you have some, some magic, right? But why stop just at constants and uh, at every images and fonts and stuff like that you do have in your project, uh, while there is so many um, stuff that you have to implement that are just boilerplate code that you, want, that you are going to repeat and copy-paste, and obviously made some mistakes while you copy-paste. Like, for example, uh, an equitable implementation. Uh, if you ever implemented equitable, uh, you know that it's always repetitive code. Um, and of course, we want to automate that uh, because if 
somebody, again, adds some new properties, maybe um, they are not aware that you have an equitable implementation, so they are going to forget to update. And it would lead to uh, quite obscure bugs, because now, uh, with this, this kind of uh, situation, the code will still compile, and maybe your app will mainly uh, behave correctly, but in some of those cases uh, where you change the data model, uh, we'll not be able to tell you that it's different. So again, we're lazy. We don't want to do that manually. We don't want to maintain that. So we're going to use code generation. But uh, for that kind of code, we, um, we don't generate code from resources like SwiftGen does uh, with scanning your images on your fonts. We actually want a tool that uh, is able to scan your actual code and generate code from that code. So that tool exists, and it's called Sorcery. So it's quite complementary with SwiftGen. Generally, you will uh, use both. And how Sorcery works is very similar to, uh, to SwiftGen, actually. We have got a lot of um, components in, in common. Um, so SwiftGen passes your input files, generates a dictionary representation that's going to be fed to the template. And given what you, how you wrote your template, it's going to generate exactly what you want. Well, Sorcery does the exact same thing, but passes your source code to generate what is called an AST. Uh, so that's uh, some metadata about your code, like the list of types that is um, in your code, in code base, and the list of properties of those types, stuff like that. And it's going to generate an internal representation of that, feed that to your template, and you can generate code from that. So one simple thing that you can do with that uh, is not even uh, generate Swift code, but just use that to introspect your code. That's a very simple template there. Uh, that allows you to have a grasp of how many structs and enums and classes you have in your project. But you can imagine uh, maybe have uh, some code that will generate some HTML and that's going to list all the types that you have in your one by one, uh, all the types you have in your code or whatever. It can help you um, have a grasp of a new project that you that you just got that, is, that has some legacy code and you want to have a, an overview of uh, how it's structured. But what we wanted uh, code generation for was actually for equitable in a few slides before. Uh, so how about doing that? Uh, so imagine you have this kind of struct and you want to implement equitable, so we want something like this. And again, it's uh, repetitive code, so you can see that's just the, the implementation of equal equal. It's just the same thing over and over again. So we're just going to use a for loop, and for every variable, uh, every stored variable in this type, we're going to generate a guard statement. So again, pretty simple uh, template there, uh, just a main for loop. Uh, but we don't want to generate equitable for every single type in our code base, right? We want to opt in um, to just uh, the model um, structures that we have, for example. And to do that, there is a nice trick that a lot of uh, uh, sorcery templates use, uh, is to use a phantom pro protocol. So basically, that just an empty protocol. Um, let's call it uh, auto-equitable, for example. And you declare somewhere in your code base an empty protocol, auto-equitable, with empty curly braces, that has no real purpose in your uh, behavior of the, of the code base, but is just used as a marker to opt in to this code generation. So what we're going to do uh, is we're going to ask Sorcery to loop over all the types implementing this phantom protocol. And once we have this template, uh, in our actual code base, we can just conform to auto equitable, and sorcery will run, and we've got some magic. Um, 
Well, to be fair, uh, the real template for auto equitable is a little bit more complicated because you, can, you will have to handle optionals or arrays and stuff like that. You can actually find this full template, the full template for auto equitable on the Sorcery's GitHub repo. They have a few um, templates, example templates that you can use. But you see the ID. It's not that complicated to do exactly what you want with that. And once you have the template written, uh, you can just put that in all your projects and have everything for free. Another uh, example that is uh, quite common in your code base is JSON parsing. Everyone loves JSON parsing, right? Um, and everyone loves doing those kind of stuff. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, once again, uh, we're going to try um, to generate that. And we're going to start with our own, writing to our own template this, this time. So we have the same structure. We're going to iterate over all the types that are going to conform to this phantom auto JSON deserializable protocol. Yeah, quite a mouthful. Um, and yeah, we're going to um, try to, to do that with trial and error, because we won't uh, manage to, uh, to write the template right uh, at the first try. So we start with this kind of structure. We know that we're going to iterate over all the stored variables, but we don't really know uh, what to put there. So probably we're going to write that template, run sorcery, uh, see what it's generated, and edit our template, generate it again. It can be um, quite a long process. Um, sorcery has this cool feature of uh, a daemon mode. So when you happen to write your own template, uh, you'll definitely want to use that. You invoke sorcery for the, from the terminal, for example, with this dash dash watch flag. And what it does is instead of um, passing your, your code, generate the template, and just uh, go back to, to your prompt, it generates the code, and it keeps running and watching your template so that every time you save, you edit your template and you save it, it's going to live regenerate the output. So you can have your templates and your generated code side by side in your favorite code editor, and you can see live uh, what you'll get. So if we go back to our example, for every property, we're going to probably want to have something like this. Uh, so, for example, if we have a first name property, we probably want to try to fetch it from the first name key from the JSON. But wait, you know that it's not an, uh, an ideal world out there. You won't have the same name, exact same name for your property and from, for your JSON key. So we're going to try to, um, to tweak that and to, to make that better. But how can we do that when all sorcery does is parse your code so it doesn't know about your, um, your API contract? Well, there is one uh, other cool feature of sorcery is this thing called annotations. Uh, that's basically just uh, special comments that you can put on, uh, above every type or every type declaration or every property declaration, stuff like that. And you can um, pass arbitrary value, key and values, associate arbitrary keys and values to those properties. So here we only have one annotation for the first name and one for the last name, but you can actually add uh, a lot more. And then in your template, you'll be able to access those annotation uh, with the property dot annotations dot JSON key. So we, what we just did there is, if there is an annotation uh, for the JSON key, key, uh, we're going to use that. But if there is not, uh, we use this default filter provided by our template engine uh, stencil. And if there is no annotation, we're going to fall back to the property name. And we can do that for all properties. So if we just do that, the, we can just fetch the, property, the proper JSON key. 
We save, we see, okay, that looks good, and then we edit it again. We add uh, the affectation, like uh, the assignation, like uh, self.prop name equal all this stuff. And we're gonna cast the result to the proper uh, type name. So, yeah, now we're getting somewhere. And if you take a look back at what we just did, um, I actually don't know uh, how many of you uh, do Android development, but we actually just, uh, yeah, <laughs> some people there, we actually just brought this, um, this annotation um, features that are really common uh, in Java and in Android uh, to Swift. So we expanded the, <laughs> actually expanded the language and the capabilities, capabilities of the Swift language uh, right there. So I think that's pretty awesome. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty awesome to uh, be able to, to do that just with some, some commands over there and just one build phase and get everything for free. And with just, just that, we already saved a tons of lines of code. Um, because imagine if you had to write all of that code for all of your structures that you have in your code base. Um, I didn't um, actually count uh, how many lines of code that would be to type that all manually because I don't want to do that anymore. I just want to conform to a quotable to, to add those annotations or those marker protocols there, and you have that for free. Uh, another um, concrete example that you can see uh, in, uh, in various code bases is uh, type erasure. So I won't give a talk about uh, type erasure. If you want to learn more, you can actually watch uh, Gwen's talk at TriSwift about that. But the main idea there is that um, type erasure is powerful, but it's a lot of boring code to type again and again if you want uh, type er erasure for just one protocol. And you have to repeat that for every protocol. But it's always the same code. It only varies with just one or two features. So I actually uh, implemented that template uh, late at night uh, <laughs> last evening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was uh, really uh, quick to, com to come up with the, that template because that's, uh, that's just the same. Uh, you know the code that you want to write. So probably in your template, you're going you're gonna to implement the type erasure once in your actual code, and you're going to copy-paste that into a template file so that you have your original structure that you want to get, and you're going to start to replace everything that's going to change with some variables and add some tags like for, for loops in your template. And you turn the actual code that you wrote manually and you made sure that it compiled into a template that can be uh, reused. And now with that template, we just annotate uh, our protocol with this annotation. We tell it uh, what we want to type erase, and we got that for free. And again, if there is um, tons of protocol you need to type erase in your code, it's just one command now, and you get that. Uh, there's lots and lots of uh, other ideas uh, that you can use um, Swift uh, code generation and sorcery for. Um, I won't present them all there. Um, but uh, for those of you who are familiar with lenses, that's the same idea. Uh, that's a really powerful feature uh, that you can use in your code uh, if you're into that. But that's also a lot of repetitive code. Uh, I didn't try to implement lenses yet, but I figure it would be um, pretty easy to come up with a template to do that. Same with decorators. Uh, and you can even use sorcery uh, to generate your test cases. So if you, if you do uh, property-based testing, for example, you can maybe add some annotations uh, to your code and let sorcery generate everything for you. Uh, so there is a lot of other uh, ideas. Um, it's 
actually pretty limited only by your imagination. Uh, there are some other um, templates that you can find everywhere on the internet. Um, if you don't want to try to write your own template yourself, uh, so there is this blog post uh, on a little bit of Cocoa about getting an API client auto-generated with Sourcery. You saw the JSON uh, parsing code. Uh, we actually have a full implementation of that that also supports uh, custom types that that's that's going to be passed from the JSON and stuff like that. Uh, you saw type erasure. And if you want to learn more about Sorcery and SwiftGen, uh, Christoph, which is, who is the author of uh, Sorcery, gave a recent talk, uh, which was like a live coding at uh, CraftCon, so the, the video is available there. I gave a live coding uh, recently as well, so you can see SwiftGen in action. And we actually welcome uh, developers to SwiftGen. We are starting to uh, grow the community. We are, I think, five already contributors on the project. SwiftGen is actually a GitHub organization now. And we have lots of interesting ideas to improve the tool, to maybe uh, pass other kinds of resources, like uh, pass playlists and generate constants for the, playlist, uh, the keys you have in your playlist, or pass other, other uh, kind of stuff like bear JSON. We could even uh, wish to uh, let Sorcery pass uh, Swagger uh, JSON and generate every model and maybe even API calls automatically. So there is a lot of cool ideas uh, mm -hmm. that we want to add, but um, SwiftGen is al already capable of doing a lot of things, and I hope you're going to um, see the, the, the advantage that it's going to bring. One, one thing I didn't, uh, I failed to mention, is that if you don't want to implement your own templates, uh, well, like I said, for Sorcery, there is some examples on the net, and for SwiftGen, uh, there is actually some templates bundled with SwiftGen, so when you download SwiftGen and install it on your machine or on your project, you can just, uh, instead of writing your own template, you can just tell SwiftGen, okay, use uh, this template named uh, Thrift3 or something, and you don't have to bother to write your own. So I hope I convince you to, uh, to use code generation in your project. Again, it's just two build phase to add and a lot of, uh, of good thing to, to use. So I don't know if we have time for questions. Yeah, probably. Uh, you will find uh, me on the, the internet quite everywhere, actually. Uh, on Twitter, on my blog, on my GitHub. Uh, those slides, as I already said, are available on Speaker Deck, and you'll find those tools on GitHub as well, because open source is awesome, and everything is on GitHub. Thank you. <laughs>